Today I'm going to be putting a refrigerant charge on the AC system in this 1996 Ford F-150. This will cover putting a charge on these F-150s from 1980 to 1996 that have 134A refrigerant. This process will also cover trucks that came from the factory with R12 Freon that has been retrofitted over to 134A. Tools I'm going to be using today is a set of manifold gauges like this for 134A. You want a full set of manifold gauges so you can read your readings and all and where you can access both the high and the low side. I'm also going to be using this vacuum pump. I bought this pump at Harbor Freight for 20 bucks. It's designed to hook up to my air compressor. You can also buy a vacuum pump that's the compressor and pumping all in one in one tool. Them work better than these, but this will work just fine. And if you don't do this all the time, 20 bucks, you can't beat it. Start by removing the valve caps off both the low side and the high side. You can identify the high side with the bigger red cap. The low side will be the smaller cap. They're usually blue for the low side. This one just came in black. The low side on these trucks are going to be on the accumulator that's attached to the evaporator cord that goes into the dash. They're close to the firewall on the passenger side. The high side you're going to find on the driver's side close up to the radiator. You want to hook up my gauges both on the low side and high side. Start off making sure both sides are closed on your manifold gauges. And these set of gauges right here, they have a little turn valve to open and close them here at the chuck. Make sure they're all the way closed, which is screwed all the way out. Chuck up your low side, make sure it's on there tight, and then open up that valve on the chuck. And do the same thing to the high side. Be careful, especially on this high side, as the uh, valve is on this line. Make sure you don't bend it, so kind of hold it under it while you chuck it to keep from bending that refrigerant line. Then we're going Next step in the process is pulling the vacuum on the system. That will remove any moisture that's in the system. It will remove it out because moisture in a uh, AC system will damage the compressor and the other components. It will cause corrosion in there and it will fail. And it also makes it where it takes the, the refrigerant better. I'm going to hook my yellow charge hose from my manifold gauges up to the vacuum pump. And all these fittings on these hoses have O-rings in there, so just snuggling them up by hand will seal it up. Once the vacuum pump's running, then go ahead and open up both the low and high side to start drawing the vacuum. And you'll notice that the needle will start dropping down to the vacuum stage. And we're going to let it run and pull a vacuum on it for between 30 and 40. 30 minutes in an hour to make sure we get it real good. Right here on the vacuum stage of the low side gauge, it's holding around 20 bars, 20 psi, and that's a good run. All right, the vacuum's been running for about an hour now. We've got about 22, 24 bars on the vacuum side. That's really good. I like to have at least 20. And that right there, that's really good. So once you get done pulling your vacuum, it's ran for 30 minutes to an hour or so. Before you cut your pump off, which I'll cut the air supply off to it, you want to shut both the low and high side off so you don't lose that vacuum on it. Go ahead and close them sides off. The vacuum's holding right around 22. What I'm going to do is let it sit for a couple hours and we're going to keep that number in mind and come back in a couple hours, look at it. If it's still 
the same, then that means we don't have any major leaks. But if you come back after it's sitting for a couple hours and it loses its vacuum or lost a lot of that pressure, then that means you got some major leak that you need to find. Here on the left hand side of the accumulator is the pressure switch that tells the compressor when the cycle on and off if the pressures are high or low. When the, uh, there's no refrigerant in the system, it makes it where it doesn't want to cycle or it would cycle on and off really quickly, making it more difficult to charge. A little shortcut to do is to unplug the wiring harness from it and taking a piece of a jumper wire and jumping these two uh, connectors that allow the compressor to cycle full time. You want to make sure though when you do this you're putting refrigerant in the system because you don't want that compressor to run dry in there like that. It can cause damage. Alright I let this sit overnight and it still held its vacuum around 2022 so that means that we don't have any major leaks in the system. We're ready to charge it up. The Freon capacity may vary in the year models on these trucks. This one came factory with 134A and a lot of times they'll have a sticker up under the hood of how much for it to hold. Right here mine it says it's supposed to hold two pounds two pounds six ounces of refrigerant and eleven ounces of oil since we didn't do any major component replacement we don't have to worry about putting oil in it unless you start hearing a lot of compression noise then you can add a little oil but you don't want to put too much oil in it so that's why you don't need to add any oil unless you've done a major component replacement like if you replaced a compressor it's important to keep an eye on your gauges once you put your freon in there and as you're putting the freon in there your uh, pressure readings can tell you a lot of if you have too little or too much freon in it and it can also let you know if you have a problem with it if the pressures don't correlate the ambient temperature outside has a lot to do with what these readings are supposed to read at, at certain temperatures I have a chart right here it kind of shows you what the readings should be during the ambient temperature outside I'm going to be putting three 12 ounce cans in here. This is usually what it takes to get me where I need to be. These cans, since they're 12 ounces, they're not a full pound each. So that's two cans would be 24, 36 ounces. 16 ounce makes a pound. So we'll be putting two pounds and four ounces of Freon in it. The system calls for two pounds, six ounces. It's hard to get that exact number without having a scale to be able to weigh a partial can or if you have a big 80 pound cylinder of it, you can set that cylinder on the scale and zero it out and put Freon in it till you get to 2 pounds 6 ounces. But these trucks are a little forgiving if you're just a couple ounces off, it really won't make a huge difference. Three cans will usually get where you need to be if you got the proper oil in the system. This is the kind of can tapping tool I have. This one, it, you squeeze the can in it and it punctures it through the side of it. And it has these different adjustments you fold over in there to fit. Like with them out, it fits a 134A can. Both of them in will fit an oil charge can. So you put both these in if you need to put an oil charge can in it before you charged it. And then just uh, one spacer in there would fit a R12 can. Start by double checking to make sure both the low and high side are closed on the manifold gauges. Then we're going to take our can tapping tool and hook it up to the charging line. And I'm going to go ahead and prep a can in here. So once I crank the truck up, only thing I got to do is open up the low side. You only charge through the low side. We will not open up the high side. We'll leave that shut through the charging process. Squeeze it. The next step is to crank the truck up. Turn the AC on max and on high. Make sure blend doors all the way on cold. Then come around. 
and open up the low side. You're gonna see that needle jump up, jump up, take a can and wiggle it back and forth, rotate it back and forth to help it take that freon. And as you see that needle up, when this can gets empty, you'll see it drop down and you'll feel that the can's empty. Just keep wiggling this can back and forth, kind of hold it up some, help it take it better. You see that pressure starting to drop down and I can feel in the can that it's starting to get empty. Once the can's empty, you shut off the low side, hold this away, away from your eyes, release it. Grab your next can, put it in there, open the low side back up, keep on going. Shut off the low side, again, change it out. You hear just a little bit of air, but that was just, just compressed air, it wasn't even bring on in it. Put this one down, the low side back up, this third can should do it. Felt inside and it's starting to cool off. Put the third can in there, it's holding about 30 psi on the low side, 150 on the high side, with the ambient temperature outside of about 70 degrees. So that's a pretty set the range, just, just a tad on the low side, but that's because it's just a couple ounces short. You can also see that the accumulator is condensing up real good, it ain't staying frozen over. Then what I'm going to do is turn the AC off right quick to remove this jumper wire, plug the uh, pressure switch back up, and then turn the AC back on to check and make sure everything's working correctly. Numbers are looking good. Everything's working correctly. The pressure switch hook back up. Get it from the compressor, center of the clutch, you can see that it's spinning, so it's running and working correctly. Once you're done putting the free iron in it, Turn the AC off, cut the truck off, then unhook all your gauges. Make sure you turn, have all the valves closed before you unhook any chucks. Put your covers back on the valves. Make sure you got the valve covers on tight, both the low and high side. So that concludes my video on how to charge AC system. A 1980 to 1996 Ford F-150 with R134A Freon. It'll also work, with, like I said before, it'll work with trucks that came from the factory with R12 Freon that's been retrofitted over to 134A. The process is the same with all of them. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.